point out this well-dressed sister here to make me feel some type of way about myself becomes a problem. Man, let me let me get you. Let me get you. Dance, girl. Oh, yeah, girl. Reason I have never said I do is because I don't. I've, I've been married, um, and I, I I couldn't sign up for bad sex. Let's drive. So if we enter a relationship with anything that's about me, 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 then I don't believe that we're ready. You just say people that work all the time. Right, work all the time. You know, people that had nine to fives don't work all the time. I don't care what anybody say, they don't work all the time. I try to explain this all the time. When I tell people, I'm like, I am brain tired. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no. I said, because just because I left my office, I'm still thinking about my case. I'm still prepared for the next day. I still got worried about what's coming up on the calendar. I still, you know, it's like, it's just constant, constant, constant. And I think it's even worse when you have your own business. Right, so today we have someone here who is an entrepreneur. He's not just an entrepreneur, he's the man who does it all. Sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you hold every position from the marketing position to the creator, to the, to the uh, trash man, to the, uh, what else do you have? You have to do everything it takes to do a business. And I've been an entrepreneur and I know what it's like. Some days I miss it, but I know what it's like. But we have Mr. Andre, Andre, Andre Andrews yes. from Dre's Homemade Water Rice and Ice Cream. Now, for those of you who don't know, we in Philly, and water rice is the thing here, okay? So this yes. peak season in the summertime, we don't want to hear nothing about that talente and all that other stuff that y'all want to have out there. Here is all about water rice and a pretzel. And so, Andre, tell us about your line. Yes, um, again, my name is Andre Andrews. I'm the owner of uh, Dre's Water Ice and Ice Cream. We have uh, two locations for the water ice, which is at uh, Brown's Family Shot Right at 52nd and Jefferson, uh, the Park Side location and uh, Fox and Robinson Street uh, is the second location for the wood ice. Uh, the ice cream, we are located in uh, 11 uh, Brown's Family Shot Rights. We have Ooh. banana pudding, sweet potato pie, strawberry shortcake, mint chip, chocolate chip brownie, and butter praline. And uh, within two weeks, probably beginning of the month, I'll be coming out with three new flavors, which are gonna be eggnog, uh, a pumpkin pie flavor, and uh, peach cobbler. Well, Dre, what made you, I've known you for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. And he's all, he's, um, actually, Dre is really into um, community development. He's really into revitalizing our community and uplifting our people. So yes. what made this idea the one? Well, you know, I'm always about uh, new ideas and, and making money. So I was just sitting home on, on a Sunday. And, uh, you know, usually on Sundays or throughout the whole week, I usually spend a lot of time with my grandfather. He was a... He, he wasn't a baker, but he did a lot of baking for the family and, and for the neighborhood or whatnot. So I wanted some pie and I wanted some ice cream. I usually, uh, you know, sit with, have pie with my grandfather, my grandmother. We talk family dinners or whatnot. And of course, he's no longer with me, so I was unable to have a pie that he baked along with my ice cream. So I said, I decided to make my own ice cream and uh, have pie. So I just fused them together. Instead of having pie and ice cream, I, feed, I said, I'll have pie all together as one fuse and marry them together and come up with a flavor. And that's how I came up with the sweet potato pie and the banana pudding. Was the well, first a woman there with you when you did it? Uh, no, 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 no. Where I'm is your woman? Uh, she's home somewhere. I don't know where she is. She's home somewhere, she's home, you don't she, know? She's home somewhere, yes. Yeah, Are home. you married? I'm not married yet. I got close a couple times, but I'm not married yet. Is it hard trying to sustain a relationship when you got this baby, basically, of a business? Yes, it's very hard. You have to find someone that understands that um, that you're an entrepreneur. You just not you not, you're just not busy working a nine to five, or you're not busy working a nine to five and live. I tell you, actually, are you running the business? And and when you're at the beginning stage, it's very hard. You know, um, I use my own money. I'm fin I'm financing everything myself, so I have to count every penny. I have to make sure everything is correct. So I don't I don't work a nine to five eight hours or ten hours a day. Sometimes I work eighteen to twenty hours a day. So I eat, sleep, and live this. So sometimes you have to find someone that, that understands that 
we have to give a lot to this because it's just not, you know, it's my own money. I don't pay myself. I haven't. I'm profitable, but not to the point where I can reinvest into my business and pay me as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm living off of every penny, actually. So, um, you know, it's some, it's, and it's hard. You had to find a balance to, to be able to run your business, turn it off, and give someone uh, the time that, that she needs. And, and that's have very hard. Have you tried hard. it? You said you got close. So you, yeah. while you're doing this business, have you tried it? Tell us about some of the experience. Because I was an entrepreneur, and I know my experiences were always, why can't you? Why is your phone always ringing? Why, why? It was always too many questions. And, and I'm not a question answerer. Right. So I didn't like it. So talk, talk about some of your experiences. It's just it's, for me. It's just hard for me to turn off that switch. Like you know, you could be, you know, you could be out for dinner, but you'd be like, I think my ice cream would be great in this restaurant. <laughs> or, or I see some. Or I see some. Or I see someone. Someone plate. Like boom, I can make that into an ice cream. Or, or I should talk to the chef. And like you should serve this with this meal or something like that. And it's hard because sometimes you don't want to talk about business. When you with but the other person, you want to talk about her, but it's, right? it's always in your mind. Yes. You, we, and I'm always in the creative um, state of mind. So it's like, so even she be like, man, he talking about this again. <laughs> you know, it is like, and sometimes you even think, sometimes you don't even know that you're talking about your business. It's like I could be talking about a competitor, like such and such put his stuff on sale today. Who do you think he is putting his stuff on sale <laughs> next to <laughs> mine? Because I find myself like, you know, I'm not a thug or nothing, but I, you know, I come from the street, so I, I, I compare. I always I run my business as like drug dealers run their business. It's the, it's the same thing. You you can run a Fortune 500, or you can run a, a multi-million dollar drug operation. You can run a Fortune 500 company. So I'm from the I'm from the community. I know several. I won't say successful, but a lot of people that was in the drug trade that ran a great operation. And I I, I seen that growing up. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I I applied those things to my business. And plus, what I learned as a, a business major. Or finance major in college, and sometimes I'd be catching myself like, "Who do you think he is?" So someone, someone come into your freezer or freezer next to your eyes, he put your stuff on sale. It's just like someone coming up into your neighborhood or in your corner, selling the product, uh, infringing on your product on your corner, selling something less. He's selling it for two for five, but you selling it for five. So that's how sometimes I gotta sometimes take my, 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 use my higher education skills and not my urban skills and be like, "Who do you think he is?" Well, which Coming one of those do you think is helping with the relationship? Both of them. Actually, I like I like the the Ill, illegal. I mean, they're the same. They're the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's, the same. it's, it's, it's basically the same. But I, I like I use them interchangeably. You know, it's the same supply and demand. They are the same. No, I mean with your actual relationship. Because we okay. You know, since we're being honest and we was talking about the street hustlers, you know, they're not real good at maintaining successful relationships. They real good at maintaining five successful relationships and 15 <laughs> kids all around the world. Well, I have 15. You know, well, I, mean, I don't have any, I don't I have any children, say, so. Do I'm you good. have any kids? No, I do not. So how are you? And I mean, you know, as a childless person myself, I know that I can be very selfish because yeah. I, don't have, I don't have kids. Right. So for you, you have this business and that's your child. Yes. Do you feel like it's taking away from your ability to really commit to that woman? But we're going to go to a break right now. And when you come back, when we come back, we went, ah, I will answer that question <laughs> right here, single on a Saturday night. Thank you to everyone who helps us put the show together. We're talking about Dr. Shock of Austin Fine Photography, DJ Roman Rome on the radio every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. That's 88.1. <coughs> you need to listen to him because he's hot. Woo, woo, woo. I actually know he really gets on the turntable and does his thing. And also, ADDesignGroup.com. I'm really feeling myself right now. I'm feeling this jewelry. I never really wore blue. That's not my thing. But this blue is just like really good for me right now. So anyway, thank you adesigngroup.com and at Glam Goddess 215 follow up on Facebook to get the makeup done. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to Single on a Saturday night right here at TGI Fridays, 4000 City Ad. And you know what? Are you looking at me right now? The only reason why you get to look at me right now is because of Howard Gilliam Jr. Gilliam Jr. Productions, new video productions. He is the man. He does weddings. He does TV shows. He does whatever you need. If you want to be captured on the screen, Excuse Howard me. Gilliam Jr., NewVideoProductions.com. See, there you go. Anyway, we were just talking. No, 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 no. And how he doesn't bore me. Just so y'all know, I got a whole crush on him. So that wasn't my boredom, y'all. Oh, no, <laughs> y'all cool. We good. But how are you the man? But, what? Anyway, go ahead. You were answering the question about what was the question. Uh, the question is about how you handling the whole being in the relationship and and, and entrepreneur and 
And how does it take away from, are you selfish? Because she said, she admitted that she's selfish. I'm, I don't have any children, something. but I am not selfish. I cannot stand selfish behavior. You know, you know what? <laughs> Shelly is not. And I, I feel bad because she was so selfless to me earlier this week. I really felt bad about it, you know, for about three minutes. But still, I was really, I feel some kind of way, you know, so I went and bought myself some new lipstick and I got over it. But go ahead. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> At times I can be selfish. I, sure. I, I, I think I can be. Um, yes, I think I can be. Have you ever tried dating another entrepreneur? That would that help? Because that's a good question. An that's entrepreneur, great. like I good. felt like that's what that's what I was missing. When I dated an entrepreneur, it seemed like the relationship clicked. So we could be in a business, we could be in the same event, and I could be over here. Cause you know sometimes in business you gotta flirt, and that's real. Right. So if we have an understanding, you go handle you, you go flirt. I don't care. I go handle me. I flirt so we can get our business together. Sometimes that works. You know, have you tried it? Yes, I have tried it, and, and it does work. It does work because they understand that um, when you say you're 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 busy, that you're really busy. You right. know, it's not like I'm busy. I'm at happy hour. You know, um, well I could be. Oh, you could hour. be at happy hour because it's yeah, networking. Yeah. You got networking. But you know, you you at happy hour really conducting business. Or if you say yo, you know, you tired just coming in from a road trip is really it's really taking care of it. So I am, you know, uh, dating a. a entrepreneur and, and it's, she understands then what is your criteria for the type of woman that you need or is there I one for you? I don't have, like, I, don't have well, I just need a good person I good just need a good understanding person you don't have no whole checklist like she no. got her big boobs little waist she got the head but they got fake boobs they got fake all this stuff is fake nowadays I don't care now they got I, all kinds of lists <laughs> like on application I was born a woman like you gotta no I, I don't have I don't have a checklist but um if I I don't look for those things anymore I said the more not I, even born a woman. Well, no, I mean you said last. I mean, yeah, of course that was. <laughs> but you know the, the basic, the basic things. You know, you know, being an African American, you know, we know what we want. You know what I'm saying? So, but they got so many fake ones out here now. I definitely don't want that on my list because I'm gonna have to keep that up, and then I'm gonna have to pay for that 20 years from now. Uh, well, none of that. I want a flat. Wait, matter of fact, give me a flat one. That's wait, what I want. Give you a flat. Yeah, I don't have to pay for that one, huh? You have an ice cream business. Are you opposed to someone who really likes ice cream and eats it, and eats it so much they go? And they they know, I love women, so I don't. What she do? You know, you want to eat your ice cream? You like, oh yeah. She don't eat ice cream. You better find somebody who loves some ice cream. She better, she better had nothing else in my fridge. She better, she better take that to her mama. She better had no other company in my fridge. She gotta eat ice cream. She gonna be out. She, I'm gonna pack the ice cream in her. She has somebody else in my freezer, so. What is it about? I got it now. What is it about your ice cream and your water and your water ice that is a true reflection of you? Well, it's more. I'm. A, I'm. A, I have. A, I come from a big family, so I'm very family oriented. So, we we separate ourselves from just coming up with the basic vanilla bean or Neapolitan or cooking cream. When you have our ice cream, every spoon, every spoon tastes like what you're you're eating. So if, say for example, you get another company's cooking cream, you don't have the cookie, you just have vanilla ice cream or the cream or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So for example, it's sweet potato pie. If you don't have the crust, it still tastes like a sweet potato pie. So mm -hmm. for banana pudding, if you don't have banana pudding, you're going to taste what a banana pudding tastes like. You're going to taste, you don't have the banana or you don't have the cookie, it's going to taste like a banana mm -hmm. pudding. Now have you used your business as an advantage to get women? Because you're well, entrepreneur. We just, actually, we just, we just okay. in our third month. So we, within okay. two months, two or three months, we're in 11 supermarkets. Um, so I haven't had the chance to do so. That but, 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 but apparently Shelly likes ice cream. So right. I'm just saying, I'm like, hey, y'all for you. Shelly likes ice cream. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do be like, do you got ice cream at your crib? Yeah, no, I do. Me. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> there, I was like, you ain't bring me no ice cream. I'm saying. You got you to gotta come to my house to pick it up. You I'm in the truck, so you gotta know. come. Yeah. I, I, I give you my address. Yeah, you can the come pretty pick it up. Stuff sounding pretty good to me. So, Shelly, I, 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 I want to ask you. I was with the pie. I want to ask you. With you, with you being an entrepreneur, how, how how did that affect your dating life? You know, we talk about his date life. What about your date life as an entrepreneur? Was it good? It was, it, you know what? I thought, I, I mean, my head was blown up at that time because, you know, TV and everything. Somehow it tends to put you a little in your mind like, I, I don't gotta listen to you. I don't gotta answer to you. I don't care what you're saying. So, I, I felt like. Honestly, I think it hurt my daily life a lot. Being an entrepreneur or the, the fact that you were in the, the I, I was in it. I was in it like, no, I don't care. I'm going to do my business. I didn't I didn't take anybody 
feelings for consideration. I was selfish then. So I don't think that's the entrepreneur. I, I don't no, it know. Was, I, no, I, I mean, wanted to succeed. And nothing you could do. Yes. If you tell me to stop anything, stop. I'm trying to make it. I dare you to tell no, me No, but stop. that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's the entrepreneur. I think we all have that when we're building our careers. That's why I don't think it's just because you're, I mean, you know, I, when I when I started out practicing law, I mean, I can't believe I'm in my 15th year of practice, y'all. I don't know when that happened. Woo. But well, I mean, when I started out, the first five years, you couldn't tell, I was like, you couldn't tell me nothing because I was working at the firm 70 or 80 hours a week. I really didn't care. What? What you mean? Uh, do you, you, you need me to come to, to grandma's funeral? Don't you know we closed a big deal today? I mean, not, not your grandma's funeral, but I mean, just no matter what, it was I had to do what I had to do because I had to build my career to where it needed to be. So that I could be where I'm at now, which is kind of chill. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. It's like, because you don't start being profitable until like the third or fifth year in some business. I mean, I'm profitable, most, but most I'm not profitable. Fail like, in the first three years. Exactly. So I'm profitable. I just, yeah, I was just profitable a couple of dollars, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not profitable. Like, yo, we just, we just, you know, we profitable $100 million, know, something like that. So a lot of people. Because if you bring us the ice cream, then you're going to go broke. See, I exactly. understand. So yeah, and exactly you everybody. Only, you only three, you know, people, like, a lot of people think I'm like wealthy or whatever. I mean, because I'm in eleven supermarkets. I mean, that's to be honest with you, two months in eleven supermarkets. That is, that's, be honest that's with impressive. you, that's, 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 very, impressive, that's very, very, very big. Because this company's been out five or ten years. It's not in eleven supermarkets. Yes. And the but way I inked the deal for to be in a supermarket was very president. It was, it was it was a big deal. But a lot of people like, oh, you can't take. No, I can't. And a lot of people don't understand. It's like even for. Uh, a young lady I was dating at the time was like, I really do love you. I want to be with you, but if I'm taking all this time away, I'm not going to be able to take care of you. I don't want to rent. I'm not. I'm. I, I'm not a renter. I want to buy a nice home in a nice neighborhood. I want to provide for our children. But if I don't ground hard these first two years, yeah. I'm not going to be able to take care of you. And I, I'm not getting a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So if this don't work out, you gonna you gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be doing whatever I gotta do to get back on, on track. You might be making more money than me. It's not gonna hurt my feelings, but however you feel once your girlfriend, once your parents, that oh that you make more money, that's gonna be your problem because I'm not working and not I'm not going to another night. And that's problem. funny. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go to you and then come back to you. I'm gonna say this. That's the truth. I was in a relationship and I bought a house when we were in a relationship. Then he, when he was gone, I was left with the house, which left me with that thing like I can't do what I used to do. I might have to get a nine to five, which I have one now, but I had to because now I have this house and then it made, it, it made me have to think responsibly like, man, my business can't first go first. Right. I have to pay for this house. So that's the truth. You, I, I didn't want a nine to five, but because I have a house, and I was in this relationship and, you know, I put myself in that position, then now I got to have a nine to five. I'm grateful for my nine to five, love my nine to five, but I would have rather continue to be an entrepreneur right. and not have that pressure of, oh, I got a house to pay for. Right. Man, I, I mean, I could have been in an apartment. It's just me. I could have been just by myself in a little tiny apartment. I don't care. I just sit there like this. I don't care. But <laughs> that's just me. I wish I would have done that. But go ahead. entrepreneur and dating uh, you know compatibility when it comes to relationships is pretty much the most influencing thing that's needed so would it be good and safe to say uh, in in dating or looking for someone is to probably find someone with the same drive or in the same with the same passion in the same field is almost you when it comes to entrepreneur let's say for Dre uh, for your ice cream uh, business uh, if you found someone who was into making flavors mm -hmm. and or, or she could be a component to helping you strive so it wouldn't be an argument of lack of time but it also can be you know that could be time spent while right. working right right so, right you know sometimes entrepreneurs need to find somebody in the same field but, or but on the opposite end of that you got two entrepreneurs then who, you never see you no know, that you're always working 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 and you don't need somebody sometimes to teach you something, to grow you to another level. Sometimes you need that person to show you how to relax. Yes, being an entrepreneur is great, but sometimes you need someone to teach you how to love and, and just fall back. And that's the lesson that I didn't learn till now, that it's okay to work, but every now and then you got to fall back. You got to take time to go to the beach and put your, hand, your feet in the water and get wet <laughs> or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that went. I found that. Go ahead. I was about to take it somewhere, but I ain't going to take it there. I know. Wait. Wait. I went there in my head. I don't know what you're trying to do. Now you want him to rub the ice cream all over you? Hey! Yeah, you'll have a flashback. Well. Having flashbacks now. <laughs> I know. That's what you're Well, Dre is, you know. 
I did say I like ice cream, right? No. <laughs> Go ahead, you had a question? Go ahead. You had a question? You need a microphone. Wanted some banana pudding and sweet potato pie. Oh, you just want food. See this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dre, I gotta obviously, give you my address. Again. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, we're gonna have a whole orgy because we all showing up. These some big girls in here. You better have a lot of ice cream. I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what though? We'll invest in your business. I'll pay for my ice cream, but can I get some time with you? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna give you my address I'm when it's available right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so. like David, I'm not available, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just I, I think playing. a lot of it, as we just talking about, is time. As, as men, we realize, a lot of men, we believe that women want time. Time, 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 time. Time is very important to time. the development. So if you got an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, it's the question of time, and how do you maximize what time that you actually have? So my question is, if you're a person with very limited time, what are good ideas to maximize time when you are an entrepreneur or somebody yeah. who's putting 70 hours into the office? How do you maximize a little bit of time? Well, for me, and it's still my pet peeve because I don't have any time. I explain this all the time. So if I give you time, I took it from somewhere else. It's not, I don't have a time when I'm really like, what are you doing? Nothing. There is that sentence is never in my vocabulary. It's what are you doing? Why? That's always my response. Why? What do you, you want to do? What do you need? What do you want? If I can help you, you know, because it's, I don't have it. So my pet peeve is that men don't respect that. So, you know, Dre and I are dating. He's an entrepreneur. I'm a professional. I only have so much time. If I say, okay, Dre, we're going to do this ice cream tasting because we're going to get into BJ's and it's going to be on Tuesday from 12 to 2 and then you cancel at 11.45 on Tuesday, now I'm mad because I could have saw a client at that time. That could have been time that I was feeding my mother. That could have been time I was talking to Shelly about a show I did. That was time that I had that I needed. So for me, it's not just, it's not about the time. It is about the quality of the time. And it is about respecting my time. But that wouldn't be, in that case, when I was dating, that's the whole point. It might have been a time I might have had something planned, but if if Dr. Dre comes to town, at the same moment I'm going to supposed to see you, you come last. I've got to go get this interview with Dr. Dre. That's more important. I didn't know it was coming up. I know we had this plan, but I'm going to go get that interview with Dr. Dre because that's going to help my bottom line and help my pockets. And that's not that you're not important, not that the mate is not important, but at this particular time, my bottom line is, and I'm getting that interview with Dr. Dre, I'm getting that interview with 50 Cent, and that has happened so many times. Or if we had plans and, and the interview, sometimes with these artists, Artists, they so slow and they always late. Never on time. That, that you're always there for hours, right? Yes. Hours? Hours Never on time. This. Never we on sitting time. There, like we were sitting there all night long, all night long waiting for um outcast. What the outcast? We waiting for outcast all night long. By one point I got really ignorant and did some stuff we probably shouldn't have done, and I took some liberties, tried to get this interview a little quicker, and we almost got in trouble. But if I had a date with somebody, that person I'd be like, listen, I can't make it. I was with somebody who just could not understand. It was like, what you mean you keep breaking these dates? It's not that I don't care. It's just that I got to do what it takes to get my money or get to where I got to get. Not that interview on Outcast will get me money, but in the end result, if you put something good on TV, you get something. So do you find that, that I just feel that you got to be understanding. And maybe you might not be the... You no, know, I'm not going to be understanding. I'm not going to be understanding three times in a row because I had some other stuff to do. But the difference is, the difference is, if I stood you up two times, that third time Dr. Dre can wait. That's the difference with me. That third time Dr. Dre can wait because at a point you need to make your mate a priority. At a point you need to put your foot down. I know that now. What about you? Did, did you run into <laughs> us? Um, I would just say, you know, either side, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, or like you said, in your case, you're a professional. Everybody, there's certain things that we all do every day. Um, you may pray every day, meditate, you eat breakfast, you eat lunch. I'm not, I'm like Danielle, it's not necessarily the quantity of the time, because you don't always have 60 minutes to dedicate to one thing. Not when you're trying to grind it and get to where you're trying to get to, you're trying to be successful. So, if it's breakfast in the morning, 10 minutes, maybe it's just a bagel and coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. How about this one, Shelly? Did you ever ask this man to drive you to your interview? He has. He went, he went to a couple things. No, but I mean, I'm just saying as far as, because see, for me, that would be not breaking the date. Look, babe, I got to go do this interview, but why don't you drive me there? Because like you said, you were sitting around for hours doing nothing, waiting on outcasts. But most of the time, you couldn't get in. It was, it, was, it was limited to who was there, so it was our crew. It was me, Monica, Howard, 
key. That was it. Nobody else could get in. And that was and that was hard for other people. Because you know everybody else wanna meet the stars too. And I can't get the people into everything. You know. Now you're making excuses because you know what? I can leave for a couple minutes. Y'all just sitting there waiting. I can go outside and sit I'm there, the and boss. With, no. I ain't leaving nowhere. No, no but I'm just saying, <laughs> that's your whole attitude. That's your <laughs> attitude. That's not the reality of how the situation is. I'm just telling you that if you were a compromising person, you would have compromised and you could have you could have made those that, things work. Then I could have. I would not have now. Of course, I understand compromise and stuff. I have learned the lesson very hard. So if this is the lesson right now, I learned that lesson very hard now. I look back at it, I would have, I see one person might have been a really good person, good dude all the way around, and I would have treated him differently. Now, mm -hmm. now that I'm kind and considerate and not selfish, so that's my lesson I learned, it's a hard lesson. Dr. Yeah, I think you just had to incorporate them in your everyday life sometimes, like you said, drive them to, he drive you to the interview or something like that, or, or I could have had someone, you know, you know, um, help me set up my business for, the, for that morning or that night or something like that, or you know, or add them into my lunch break or something like that. So yeah, I think you just had to find out what makes that person tick. So sometimes people, they might understand, you just have to communicate what, you know, how to make it work. You know, um, of course, after, you know, me and one young lady, we split up. She said, you, you should have, I could have come chill with you at your job. Why you didn't say that? You know, so I should, she, she wanted, she made for me to invite her to, invite her. to come to a location right, and chill, right. whatever. But. I think she should have came up with that. Yeah. So oh, she should have came up with that? She should just impose herself on your job? Well, I mean, you know. For me, I'm the person to say, yeah, yeah, but I think I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to, it's hard for uh, It's hard for me to say, yo, you should come show me at my location or whatever, or my flagship location. I'd rather you be like, I'm going to come help you close up or help you come clean up. I'd be like, damn, she a rider. You know what right, I mean? So, ah, right, I got some ice cream at home. Say no. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> Tell them where your ice cream is again, because this is the end of the show. So we need to, uh, do you have a website or something yes, like that? Yes, um, the website is www.dreysicecream.com and dreyswardice.com. Um, they both take you to the same same uh, oh, website. Uh, the ice cream is located at all 11 Browns Family Shot Rights. And the Ward Ice is located at, um, we have a kiosk at the Fox Street location and the 52nd and Jefferson location, the Parkside location. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you could have, they actually scooped it and stuff for you? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, they scooped, did, they scooped okay. the water ice, but not the ice cream. Yeah, I know. I bought, the, I bought right. water. I mean, I bought ice cream. Yes. I didn't know that you could. I was, I was like, where is the water ice? Yeah. I had water ice. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> see? So you got fans already. So what you need to do is <laughs> after the show, we're going to all get, everybody needs to go out and get a, a gallon of ice cream drains at any brown shop right Yes, we sell it by, I'm sorry, we sell it by the pint. I was gonna uh, say, uh, no, this, this high end stuff, like Hagen dolls it's only a little bit, you got the, you got yes, no, no, yes, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are super premium, premium we are super so premium ice cream. There you go. Yes, we are super premium ice cream, that and by definition, too. Um, by definition or by law, we can uh, advertise our ice cream as a super premium ice cream. And we could take anybody to court that says they are super premium or premium ice cream, that's not, so. We are official company, we are not no, uh, we are small, but we are looking to expand. We're not just a, you know, Mr. Brown's giving this little guy a deal. We are a real ice cream company. And, and you're, you're planning for expansion. You plan, you're here in Philadelphia in the Brown shop, right? And you're planning to go? Yes, we're expanding to go into um, other shot rights as well as uh, Wegmans. Um, there's a couple supermarkets coming. Wegmans, um, what's the biggest supermarket? Uh, it doesn't come to me right now, but we we in talks with other supermarkets and other cities and states um, through the tri-state as well as down south. So we're uh, looking to expand probably by the end of this year. So somebody need to go help him set up the kiosk. Maybe they, they might get him. I'm just saying. <laughs> Before we get big, hurry up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right, we hoping your boo come along and uh, she's the right one. No, we all hope that. And then she likes ice cream. I like ice cream. Huh? Just saying. Oh, okay. you said you were dating somebody? Yeah, yeah, I'm dating somebody. Yeah, I'm dating somebody. Oh, oh. Wait, not last. See, you always got to have a spare. You see how back that up plan. This air out the oven. Yup. Back up plan. She ain't here, is she? Wait a minute, see? Lame. That was some quality time they got back today. See? But she's working on the business as well. Oh, yeah. She missed out. But anyway, this is Ingo on a Saturday night right here. I ain't gonna get in trouble. That's why I should. We will it. see you next week. Next week we have a great couple coming up. It's our very own Christopher Barrios, and he's gonna introduce us to his lovely.